Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand this morning to start off. Amen. You may be seated. Well, good morning. And we're excited to be in the house of the Lord. If you're a first-time guest today, we don't always have this worship set up, and we don't always have a banjo, but when we do, we're going to own it, right? And so, man, it's been awesome to worship in the house of the Lord. And, man, last week, we are um, looking at this message entitled, We're in this together. I want everybody to say that with me, please. We're in this together. And the focus of this message was this idea that, okay, we reflect on all that God has done, and we know that he's moving us and preparing us, but right now, with where we're at, we got to know, to, to, before we move forward, we've got to make sure we're in this together, that we're still focused on God, and that, man, we're prepared for wh what it is he's going to do. And so we say come back next week, which is today, man, and we're going to be looking at refund phase two. And so that's where we're going to be at today. But before that, I just kind of want to help you know what refund phase one was, uh, wh what it was. Some of you are here and you're like, man, I, don't, I wasn't here for that. What is that? Well, what refund is, it, it's for today, for tomorrow, and for all. And a couple months ago, we launched this campaign knowing that God was asking us today, which was back then, man, to raise $70,000 to hire Brandon Lean as a redemption minister and to, to begin to launch our redemption ministry. And we can say on Friday nights at 7 o'clock, man, God is bringing in over 100 people and they are being redeemed. God's on the move in redemption. Amen. Amen. So that was part one of phase one. And, and the second part of that was, was for us to launch Potter's House, man, second location here in our church throughout uh, the week. And so I'm excited to say that at the end of this month, man, we are going to be launching that uh, here. And it's going to be open throughout the week. And so that way students and adults and everyone, man, can come in and be able to just, uh, get, you know, hang out, get some coffee, but, man, be able to disciple one another. And so we're so excited to do that. And you, less than three months, man, helped us raise $70,000 to do that. That's a big deal. And so now, here we are in phase two, which is for tomorrow. And what we said a couple months ago was, okay, we're going to do this, and then if God willing, if we raise this, then we're going to look at, at what it might look like for us to have an additional campus or whatever that might entail. And so we're going to be looking at that today. Um, and Pastor Selena is going to come up in a little bit and give us some logistics of that. But right now, I want to focus for, for all. If you're not familiar with our vision statement here at the well, it's a church where all people, everyone say all people, can be found by the grace of God, filled by the power of the Holy Spirit, and freed to love like Christ. Found, filled, and freed. And we know that whatever it is that God is asking us to do, that it, it must impact all people. Not just some people, not just this demographic, not, the, not just this ethnicity, not just this age group. Man, it is all people. And man, as you look around, we're in the late service at 1130 service, but man, 10 o'clock is full and, and 830 is filling up. And as you can tell, this one is filling up. Praise God, we're at a church where all people, different shapes and sizes and colors and backgrounds are finding God. But man, we know that we're not done, but it ain't us. It's the Holy Spirit leading us. And so we find ourselves today in Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 19 through 46, and I'm going to read the scripture fairly fast and kind of apply that to see where we're at here today. And so here's what the word of the Lord says. Moses is speaking. He's given a recount from Egypt all the way into the promised land. He says, then just as our Lord, our God commanded us, we left Mount Sinai and traveled through the great and terrifying wilderness, as you yourselves remember, and headed toward the hill country of the Amorites. When we arrived at Kadesh Barnea, I said to you, you now have reached the hill country of the Amorites that the Lord our God is giving us. Verse 21, look, he has placed the land in front of you. Go and occupy it. Everyone say occupy it. As the Lord, the God of your ancestors has promised you. Don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged. So many sermons in this one passage. Verse 22, it says, but you all came to me and said, first, let's send out scouts to explore the land for us. They will advise us on the best route to take us and which towns we should enter. This seemed like a good idea to me, so I chose 12 scouts, one from each of your tribes, and they headed for the hill country and came to the valley of Skull and then explored it. They picked up some of the fruit and brought it back to us, and they reported, the land the Lord our God has given us is indeed good land. Israel's rebellion against the Lord, but you rebelled against the command of the Lord your God and refused to go in. I'm going to say that again, and refuse to go in. 
Verse 27, you have complained in your tents and said, the Lord must hate us. That's why he's brought us here in Egypt to hand us over to the Amorites to be slaughtered. Where can we go? Our brothers have demoralized us with their report. They tell us the people in the land are taller and more powerful than we are, and their towns are large with walls rising high into the sky. We even saw giants there, the descendants of Anak. But I said to you, don't be shocked or afraid of them. The Lord your God is going ahead of you, and he will fight for you, just as you saw him do in Egypt. And you saw how the Lord your God cared for you all along the way as you traveled through the wilderness, just as the father cares for his children, his, ch his child. Now he has brought you to this place, but even after all he did, you refused to trust the Lord your God, who goes before you looking for the best places to camp, guiding you with a pillar of fire by night and a pillar of cloud by day. And when the Lord heard your, you complaining, he became very angry. He solemnly swore, not one of you from this wicked generation will live to see the good land I swore to give your ancestors, except for Caleb, son of Jephunneh. He will, he will see this land because he has followed the Lord completely. Say completely. Making sure you're with me still. It says, I will give to him and his descendants some of this land that he explored during his scouting mission. Verse 37, and the Lord was also angry with me because of you. He said to me, Moses, not even you will uh, enter the promised land. Instead, your assistant Joshua, son of Nun, will lead the people into the land. Encourage him, for he will lead Israel as they take possession of it. I will give the land to you, to your little ones and your innocent children. You are afraid that they would be captured, but they will be the ones that occupy it. As for you, turn around now and go back through the wilderness toward the Red Sea. Then you confess, we have sinned against the Lord. We will go into the land and fight for it, as the Lord our God has commanded us. So your men strapped on their weapons, thinking it would be easy to attack the hill country. But the Lord told me to tell you, do not attack, for I am not with you. If you go ahead of your own, you will be crushed by your enemies. And that is what I told you, but you would not listen. Instead, you rebelled against the Lord's command and arrogantly went into the hill country to fight. The Amorites, and this is the last selection of scripture, who lived there came out against you like a swarm of bees. They chased and battered you all the way from Seir to Hormah. Then you, did, then you returned and wept before the Lord, but, re, but he refused to listen. So you stayed there at the Kadesh for a long time. Whew. A lot of scripture there, right? But the context here, I need you to hear this, whether you're familiar with scripture or not. This is a passage that summarizes 40-some years of Moses leading the people from the Egyptian slavery, man, from the Egyptians, right? He's leading them, and God man, brought down 10 plagues for the Egyptians to, to release them. And then for, man, for day in and day out, God is leading them through the wilderness. Man, they're headed to their promised land. They didn't have any land of their own, and God was leading them to their own land. And then God sent manna from heaven, which is you know, food for them, and all these different things. And, and they're, they're being guided, and they went day in and day out of just trusting God for, for a series of 40-some years, and they finally get to the promised land, and they're, they're there, and they're like, okay, let's send out a couple, you know, maybe 12 scouts to go see what we're getting ourselves into, which is, is wise, right? And so they send 12 scouts in there, and they come back, and they're like, yo, these giants are huge, right? It's a big obstacle in which God is calling us to go. And all of a sudden, Mo Moses got frustrated, and the people are freaking out, and they're like, we can't do this. We can't do this. There's no way. The giants are too big, man. We know that God has this for us, but, man, really, we don't have the ability to capture it, except for Caleb. He stands up. He says, no, my God will deliver us. See, but the saddest part about this scripture is Moses was one of the greatest leaders to ever live, yet he did not inherit all. Everybody say all that God have for them. Church, the reason this is relevant today, the reason we reflect to the fact that we started with 15 people and now we're over 500 and some people, the reason that we reflect on redemption ministry and Potter's House is not to say, look at what we're doing. It's to remind ourselves that God did that then, but it's also to give us the faith for the future saying, but my God's going to do this now. See, sometimes, man, sometimes I'm all about contentment. We need to be content with the Lord where he has us. But there's a time, just like he tells Moses, to get up and get going. And, man, God has moved mightily in our church. And I, I'm so honored. Pastor Selena, are so honored to be able to, to, to lead this church. But, but if we want to continue to watch the movement of God, we cannot be like the Israelites and chicken out from what God has called us to do. We must continue to take a step-by-step step pressing in against the, the evil schemes of life and say, for men, I want God's will to be done on this earth. We've got to push through. 
You got to push through to get breakthrough. A lot of us want breakthrough and transformation and growth without doing anything. But man, God leads us into the wilderness. One of my, one of my favorite things about this passage, and I think God gave me this because I didn't uh, plant, you know, see this earlier, but after God tells them, no, 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 it's too late for you to go, I want you to go back to the Red Sea. See, the reason that's significant was because the Israelites ended up going after God told them don't go because God's like, if you don't trust me, no. They're like, no, no, God, we'll go ahead and do it. But man, they got slaughtered. But the reason I think it's so significant, God says, no, no, go back that way. You're going to wander in the wilderness for a little bit longer, go to the Red Sea. You know why I think that he sent them there? Because, man, he, he wants them going down memory lane and say, do you remember that if it wasn't for me, you would still be a slave to the Egyptians? Do you remember that after the ten plagues and you began to wander and you began to run away from the Egyptians and you were caught, you are about to get killed or drowned in the sea? But, man, I split that thing right down the middle so that you could walk through. So right now, man, you're, you're about, you are about to experience all that you were promised, but, man, you, you rejected that. So I want to bring you back to the Red Sea of when you realize that you were nothing. Church, we as a church must reflect on what God has done in the past because it helps us stay focused for the future. Why do I keep saying that? Because we as the church universal have a great man, track record of saying, okay, let's do this. But then all of a sudden, as God begins to do more and more things, we begin to get very self-centered and very small focused. But I don't believe that's a lie for this church. I believe God's just getting started. And I believe you and I fit in this journey together in a very specific role. Last week, as we said, we're in this together. We said that we must continue to worship God together. We must continue to work together. And we must continue to walk together in church. I'm ready to do that today. I'm ready to walk together. If you go ahead and play this video. The well began in my living room with a group of 30 people. In February of 2016, we launched at the Hilton Doubletree and quickly grew to a congregation of about 200. Within the first year, we began to look for a more permanent location and the Lord opened the door for us to move into our current downtown campus where we now have three services on Sunday mornings and more than 500 people who call the well their home. Over the past three months, God has provided $70,000 through phase one of our refund campaign to allow us to begin Redemption Ministry in the Potter's House downtown at the well. Redemption Ministry includes Friday night services, weekly recovery discipleship, and monthly outreach to the most broken in our community. The Potter's House, voted the best college hangout for seven years running, will open their second location in our commons the end of September. We are so excited now to share what we believe is God's vision for the well in phase two of our refund campaign. In March of 2019, we will launch the second location of the Well Church in North Springfield. God willing, the Well North will be located at 720 East Norton Road, just a few miles from Hillcrest High School and visible from I-44 between Glenstone and Kansas Expressway. Over the next five months, our refund goal is to raise another $150,000, which will allow us to take this next step. From the beginning, we knew that God created the well to be a church that would plant multiple campuses. We are asking you to join us on this exciting journey through prayer, financial support, and joining the launch team. Our prayer is that the well will continue to be a church where all people can be found by the grace of God, filled by the power of the Holy Spirit, and freed to love like Christ. Amen? Woo! Yes. <laughs> Amen. Man, we are so excited to finally get to share with you uh, phase two of the refund goal and of refund, which is uh, the Well North. So we are excited about the North Campus and, and what that's going to look like and all that God is going to do in and through uh, this part of our vision. And so um, we just want to share with you today some some facts, some information about the structure and governing. I think a lot of people, you see that new building and you think, well, what does that mean for downtown? And so we are so excited that um, God is going to enable us to have two campuses. So the idea is that the Well Church downtown will stay here. Uh, we will continue to meet just as we meet. We're opening up the Potter's House Redemption Ministry, and um, it's going to be an amazing thing to see what God continues to do here at the downtown campus. But if you're here, now this service you can kind of breathe a little bit, um, but you know, first service is filling up, the 10 o'clock service is completely packed, and so it's really clear that we need more room. Um, and we have known since the very beginning that God 
called us to plant multiple campuses of the well. And so we're just so excited that not only will we be able to have our downtown campus here in Springfield, but that God has opened the door that we can also have a well campus on the north side of Springfield. And so what that looks like as far as the governing system, we will continue to be one church. Uh, we will have one church board. We will have one staff that will run both campuses. Uh, we will have one bank account. So all of the money that comes in downtown, the ties that come in for the North Campus that will all go together um, to be used for the Well Church. We'll have one website, but we will have two campuses. And in that, we will have two leadership teams. So while the staff and the board will remain the same, we know on Sunday mornings we're going to need a team at the North Campus. We're going to need a team at the downtown campus. So we're excited about what that's going to look like as God calls many of you uh, to become part of that launch team and that leadership team. And then calls new people to become part of the leadership team here at the downtown campus as some of those individuals will go to the north campus. Pastor Dylan and I will continue to be on a preaching rotation, so we will both preach at both campuses. However, uh, we will have campus pastors. Obviously, we can't both be both places at the same time, so Pastor Dylan will primarily be here downtown, and he will be leading this campus. I will be at the north campus, primarily leading that campus there, uh, but just excited to continue to be one church with two locations. And so... Um, the next thing we want to share with you this morning is a little bit about the timeline. This has actually been in the works for many, many months. Uh, we're just now getting to share with you. In August of 2018, we went before our church board, who unanimously voted yes for this vision. We then went before the membership of the Well Church, which unanimously voted yes for this vision. And then we went through um, our district advisory board. We are organized through the Global Church of the Nazarene. And so we went be before our advisory board with the district and received a unanimous yes, which is not an easy thing to do, um, but it's wonderful to have that backing and support behind us. And so um, now we are in September, and so we will begin the refund phase two. In October of 2018, we will begin to form uh, the leadership team and the launch team for the North Campus, which will come from this congregation. In January, we will close on the real estate and we will take ownership of the building. And also in January of 2019, we will have the launch team, which will begin meeting on a weekly basis to orchestrate all that will take place within the church. And then we'll have our first pre-launch outreach and our first pre-launch service in the new building in January, probably prior to all of our renovations. Um, we know that in January and February, we will be doing renovations on the building. The building's actually in incredible um, shape. It's in good condition, and so we're very excited and blessed about that. And then in all, also in February, we will have a pre-launch outreach and a pre-launch service. So we'll have two of those uh, before we actually launch the Well North Campus in March of 2019. Woo-woo! Are you excited? <laughs> I'm excited. And so this is just a picture. Um, again, you saw footage of the building on the video. Many of you have probably passed this building several times. It's visible on I-44 between Glenstone and Kansas Expressway. So it has incredible visibility from the interstate, and we just are ready to pour green paint all over it. We can't wait. And so well, very tactfully, of course. Um, but it's going to be great, and we know that it's going to provide incredible visibility there on the interstate. And then it's also part of a community. So that's, that's awesome, being very close to the fairgrounds and um, Glendale, or excuse me, Hillcrest High School. So that's an exciting thing. So just to let you know a little bit about the location, um, the address is 720 East Norton Road. And the builder evaluation of the building is $1.7 million. The list price on the building is $969,000, with a square footage of $14,579. The original building, just a small portion of it, was built in 1980. Then there was an addition in 1992, another addition in 2002, and then a complete renovation in 2009. So while the building does need some updates, um, structurally it's really in great shape, so we're very thankful for that. Um, there's just another picture kind of showing the outside of the building. 
And then to show you a little bit about the inside, uh, you can also go online and you'll be able to view these pictures online. But we are super excited to have a worship space that will seat 400. Uh, this current worship space, you may realize, not realize, it only seats about 240. And so we're excited to have that additional space. Probably we'll start with one service there, but we'll be excited to quickly move into multiple services at that campus as well. And then it also has a large stage with a baptismal, so we're excited about the possibilities of that. It has an industrial kitchen. So here um, at the, the downtown location, it's been amazing that we basically have a refrigerator and a sink. And so we're super excited about the ministry opportunities uh, that will come with feeding people, um, having the industrial kitchen. And there's another picture of the kitchen. So we're uh, excited about the possibilities of that. Also, another thing that's really great about the campus on the north side is that it has a large youth room and it has a great kids facility. So we'll be able to have um, actual space for our youth to meet and come together and really just having a separate worship area for whoever needs to use that. And then three large uh, office spaces and conference rooms. Um, our office really here at the well that the staff used was the overflow room, which now has completely turned into overflow. <laughs> and so we all are kind of uh, just using whatever space we can, but that'll be awesome to be able to have a teaching space, an office space for the staff. And then also, <laughs> Pastor Dylan says amen. Woo! Um, and I think that's exciting, too, to understand that the you know, staff, you know, we, we, we'll, whether at this campus or there, or the, uh, the North Campus, we'll all be working out of the same space together. The youth and kids entrance, um, this is a great uh, entrance that the building has where if you're bringing kids in to drop them off for kids' church or your youth are coming in for youth service, it's a neat feature. And then you see the kids' worship space. And so this is kind of the large gathering room. You, you can't see the full space, but that kind of shows you a portion of it and the office space. And then in addition to the large gathering room for the kids, um, there's three additional kids' rooms and then an additional nursery. So there's bathrooms for the children, there's multiple bathrooms within the building. So just some really awesome features that we're super excited to be able to use and to have. And obviously just a brief overview for you. The proposal and the offer, um, the purchase price that we have agreed upon is $950,000. Uh, we are required to pay a down payment of $190,000, and the goal uh, that is that the contract will close in January, and we will take ownership of the building in January. So then just to tell you a little bit more about what that means for us as a church and the refund. So everybody uh, today has the refund brochures in your seats, and I'm not going to go through these specifically. These are for you to take home and kind of have the information in there that we're talking about today. But the goal um, is that over the next several months, starting in September, um, is to raise an additional $150,000. Now, I say that, that the, the real goal would be to raise $950,000 and just pay that sucker off. I mean, that would be amazing, you know, if somebody wants to do that. That would be awesome. But uh, we, we know that if we were to raise $150,000, uh, that would get us into the building and um, get us have the ability to begin to minister in that community. So the $150,000 would cover six months of operating expense, just so that we would know we would have time to get in there and build the congregation um, and, and be able to function properly as a church. It would also cover new staff, and the new staff would serve uh, both this community and the North community, and so we're going to continue to have staff all as one. And then it would provide money for building renovations and equipment. So like we said, there's not lots of renovating that needs to take place. We're definitely going to paint and uh, put kind of the well look, get some green in there and wood and, and just kind of renovate the building and, and give it a new identity as the well church. So that's a super exciting thing. I like decor, so that part will be super fun, I think. Um, another thing that we are excited to offer is an open house. So on Sunday, September the 30th, uh, the building will be open, and this is for anyone and everyone. Um, we had the building open for membership so that they could see it before we took our member vote. And now it's going to be open for everyone. So if you have friends or family um, that live in, on the north side or that you think might want to come, anybody can come. The building will be open, and we will just be there allowing people to go through on Sunday morning, September 30th from 2 to 4. And then the next thing that we're excited uh, to share with you is the first informational meeting. So if you are here this morning and 
uh, your heart is pounding and this makes you excited and, and you feel like God might be calling you to be part of launching the, the North Campus, we want to invite you to come and be part of this informational meeting. Maybe you're here and you know that God's called you to stay downtown. You know you are going to stay downtown, but you just really want to support and you want to pray and you want to know more about the North Campus. This is for anyone that would want to come and just have a chance to talk, to ask questions, and get additional information. So that will be on Sunday afternoon, October the 7th, here at the downtown location from 2 to 3. And then really what we want you to take from here today is the understanding that the, the true goal in this refund phase two is that we as a church will raise $150,000 uh, to go and to launch that campus and that we are believing that God will speak to the hearts of at least 100 of you um, from this campus to go and be part of that launch team. Now we know uh, we've been averaging about 5.30 um, over the last six weeks here in the downtown location. So, so that, that 100 people, and this isn't like that you decide, that you think that would be fun or cool. This is, we're saying 100 people who God speaks to, who God burdens their hearts for the north side of Springfield, who, who you never thought you would do this, you never thought this is something that God might call you to, to do, but, but right now or even over the next couple of weeks, God just begins to speak to your heart and you just can't get away from this idea that you're supposed to go and that you're supposed to help launch this new work. That being said, man, as a hundred people leave here and, and some of our leaders and some of our board members, we're going to need new people to step up and answer God's call here in the downtown campus. And so for those of you who know you who have been called to stay here, man, here, our goal is that there would be no bystanders. Here's what's so exciting about planting a church, is that when you plant a church, it requires all hands on deck. It requires everybody to, to pray and to seek God and to find out how God would have you to begin to serve. We say this all the time. The church is not the building. It's the people. And so here's what I need you to know this morning. This is not about acquiring a property, okay? It's not about acquiring a building. It's not about the building because the church isn't the building. It's the people. And so this isn't just about the, all of us as a church, but it's about you specifically answering God's call. What is it that he's asking you to do in your life in obedience to Jesus Christ? And so on September the 23rd, we're going to have what we call Respond Day. We have Respond Day during phase one, and we asked you to come and to turn your cards back in, and, and so many did, and people committed, and um, it was just amazing to see what God did. I mean, the fact that we raised $70,000 in three months, that's nuts. It's crazy. Only God. Well, now we're trying to do, now the goal is to raise $150,000, uh, and, and, and really there's an extended period of time, but man, we would love to raise that over the next six months. We believe God can do that. And so we're asking you to take your refund brochures home, and there's a portion that can be torn off uh, that we're asking that everybody respond. If it's simply to respond to pray, if it's responding that you are going to begin to tithe, uh, maybe th for the first time to trust God with your tithe, that you're going to respond by a, giving a one-time gift, whether that's $5 or $5,000. Man, God will bless your obedience in that. And then some of you will commit to a monthly goal. And so we just want you to read through that to um, let the Lord guide and direct you in that. And then there's also a place that says, I am praying about joining the launch team. I think God might be calling me to be one of those hundred who will go and launch this church. I want to share with you um, one last picture, and then Pastor Dylan's going to come back up and join us. But this picture is the launch team from the Well Church when we launched two and a half years ago in the Hilton Doubletree, almost three years ago in the Hilton Doubletree. And it's kind of crazy because there are 59 people in that photo. But here's what's cool about that. See, in March of 2019, we're going to take another one of those photos. And, and there's going to be people, most of the people in that picture of 100 aren't going to be the people who were in that picture that launched the well. And, you know, I remember, 
I remember when God began to call us to this. I remember that Sunday, and I remember that group of people. As Pastor Dylan said, it kind of started with 15, and, and then it grew to about 30. And, and on the day we launched, we had 59 people on the launch team thinking, is anybody going to come? What's this going to look like? How's God going to do this? And I remember I had been a youth pastor in Marshfield for about 18 years. And I was driving in my car one day, driving through the community of Marshfield, which I, I dearly loved. And I said, Father, can I just stay here? I mean, seriously, like, I can minister for you here. Let me just stay here. I like it here. I like it here. I like, I like it here. And I remember he said to me, Selena, I cannot do in and through you what I want to do in this place. It's time to go. It's time to step out. And as amazing as this is and what God is doing in downtown Springfield and what he's going to continue to do in downtown Springfield, and as much as I would like to just stay and hang out and, and be comfortable and enjoy all that God is doing here, again, the Lord has said, I can't do in and through you all that I want to do if you don't step out in faith. And the same is true in your life. This isn't just about planting the church. This is about your act of obedience. This is about what God is calling you to do, how he's calling you to serve, what, what he's calling you to step out in faith and be part of, whether that's staying here and, and serving, getting all in, or whether it's going to North Springfield and being all in. Man, we're excited about all that God has in store. Going back to the statement I said earlier of last week's sermon, we're in this together. I think it's pretty cool for us to re reflect back on that picture. I almost wore that shirt today, so praise God I didn't wear that shirt today. That would have been really embarrassing. But man, to be able to stand here with Pastor Selena and, and seeing all that God has done. See, we see this now, and now it makes sense to plant another one, but it didn't make sense to plant one then. And some of you here today are like, no, it does not make sense to plant another one. I like this, right? But man, if those individuals right there would not have left what they were comfortable or familiar with, we wouldn't be here today. And see, whether you acknowledge or recognize this or not, everyone, every church is a church plant. You say, no, that's not true. Yeah, somebody planted that church. And man, as we are beginning to man, embrace this next calling that God has on the north side of Springfield, we wanna ask you a few of these questions. Number one, will you pray? Sounds like a no-brainer, but you would be so surprised about how many people make decisions without praying. Last week, as we looked at, it's not about Paul or Peter or Paulus. It's about Jesus Christ. Where does God want you? Man, we are in this together. One church. Everyone say one church. One church with two locations. It's not about her or me or, or, or the third church plant or the fourth church plant. It's about what God is wanting to do through you. So the question is, will you pray? Before saying, oh, that's where I'm going. I'm familiar with this. I'm staying here. No, no, no. What does God want you to do? Get in that secret place with God and allow him to begin to speak to you. Secondly, would you give? Because of your faithfulness, we were able to invest and reap a blessing and harvest and redemption ministry, and it just started because of your faithfulness. And by the end of this month, there's going to be a whole bunch of people coming to get a latte, and instead they're going to get a whole lot of Jesus, right? Pun intended. Okay? Man, that's what God, that's pretty good. Will you give? Will, like, if this is your church home and you believe in this ministry, will you invest in that? This isn't something we're just preaching, man. We are sacrificially laying it down and saying, God, what do you want us to do? Okay? Begin to pray. And then, will you go? Will you go? If you do know the Holy Spirit's asking you to go and you feel comfortable here, it's probably because God's asking you to go. We need not some people like the other Israelites saying, oh, somebody else will go for me. No, no, we need some Caleb's to step up and say, God, I'll go. Like Isaiah, here I am, Lord, send me. 
See, I might not be predominantly over there in the North Campus, though I will be represented. I am so invested and so excited because myself went to Hillcrest High School and myself lived in those in different duplexes and apartments and houses over there. I know what it's like, man, to be in that community. And I believe that God has asked us to go there to be salt and light to the world. And there's going to be some students, just like Dylan as a little teenager, not knowing what my purpose was, but because we are going there to be in invested in the community, we are going to rescue some people from the pits of hell and give them a life they never knew they could have. Will you go and be a part of something like that? Will you go? And we're sitting in the best of the best. Finally, will you stay? It's like the old song, will you stay or will I go, right? Will you stay? The younger people did not get that at all. <laughs> but will you stay? Just like Pastor Selena said, I mean, we're going to send some of our greatest leaders and people there. You know what that means? It means going back to last week, you've got to embrace your God-given talent to step up here. We are in this together. It's not her versus me versus them. Man, this is one church with two locations, not the building, but the people. Can I get an amen? I'm going to ask you to uh, bow your heads and close your eyes, and the worship team's going to come. And as we read in Deuteronomy, it says, do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Man, it's so easy to read that. But when you're walking in it, God, I'm just reminded right here, right now, in this third service. God, I don't, didn't feel this earlier, but feeling it now. God, I, I had pastors tell me, I don't think you heard from Jesus. I don't think you're supposed to plant that church. You're too young. God, I've heard people accuse me of my, or limit me to my age. God, I've watched Pastor Selena be scolded, reprimanded for taking this radical step of faith. What about her family? What about things? And be accused of her gender. God, you're using the most unlikely people to do something. God, we don't say that in arrogance. We say that we know who our God is. We know, though we might be going against a very large obstacle, but God, we believe like the Israelites, that's the land in which you've asked us to inherit. The question is not if it's there. The question is, are we willing to embrace it? Sometimes we identify the, the physical structure of things and for us it's the building but a lot of times we neglect the process and the in the wilderness and as Moses said it's a scary wilderness it's the hard wilderness God we've went through the wilderness but God you have been faithful and Lord it's been amazing God our, our church is overflowing God we got new services we got redemption God we're getting ready for from potter's house and what we feel like you've called us to do and God now we feel that you're asking us to go and attain a building Lord God I believe Holy Spirit that that's going to be a monumental day God when people leave and they see that green and that dot and that well drop it ain't about the church people or the building but it's those people the leaders in the congregation inside that are living their lives on mission for you and so God right here right now in this moment I realize we need to go home and pray. I feel this in my spirit stronger than any other service, that there are some, though, who do know. And God, it's going to be uncomfortable for them. But God, I'm going to ask them to step out in faith and go and seek you. God, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to give? Lord, I will lead. I will follow. God, would you begin to lay upon men and women, God, what it is God, they're supposed to do, how they're going to impact Lord, that north side. I'm tired of watching the north side begin just to continue to, to be reprimanded for the drugs and the, and the low income and, and fill in the blank. God, I believe you've called us to go there to make 
Christ-like disciples to go where the town has forgot and the church has forgot, and we're going right to it. God, I believe right here, right now, God, there's some people that, that know they're called to stay, and not only to stay, not to be lazy, not to consume, but to contribute, to stand up and say, I know that leader's called to go and start that, but I know I need to raise up right here and embrace what God's given me. So, Lord, as we begin to worship, God, I know we're going to go home and pray. God, I know we're going to go home and seek out advice. But right here in this moment, God, would your spirit reside within us? God, would you come down upon us? Lord, you're our cloud. You're our fire. God, you are with us. You are our manna. You are our quail. You are everything that you have given the Israelites then. And, God, we are trusting you. Do not be discouraged. Do not be afraid. The Lord God is giving you this land today. So if you're I'm Selena Freeman, one of the pastors here at The Well. We are so glad you tuned in to this sermon and hope the Lord spoke to you through it. If you have any questions about the message, your faith, or a prayer request, you can visit the contact page of our website. We would love to meet you in person, so please come by and see us. At The Well, we believe that all people can be found by the grace of God filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, and freed to love like Christ. Have a blessed week, and remember, you are so very loved by our awesome God.